I'm soon to be launching my own PT business. So I wanted to pick your brains today. I want to get inside the mind of possibly one of the best, the the most well-established, I would say, personal trainers in my area. Andy Trinder, how are you? That's a great introduction. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm very good. Um, yeah, so obviously I PT'd before COVID, right? And then moved very swiftly online and never went back. Did COVID, um, did that really propel you into the online space then? Or would you have already done that? I wanted to get the experience of one-on-one -on -one PT and, you know, being in person, knowing how someone thinks in person and obviously fix them issues. But COVID happened and it was either, well, fold the business or go online. From what you post to your page, it seems like you have like a very open dialogue with your clients. And I wanted to get get your thoughts on this. I imagine you must share a lot of trust with them, with your clients, like in, in them to turn up and show up and in them in you to provide the guidance that you that you say you'll provide for them. Back in the fitness first days, you were like all over the gym floor. You'd be helping people with their plates and um, making conversation with people. How, how important is that bond that you have with your clients that getting to know people on a personal level before you start training them? Massive. And that's why you see me being so active. Yes, obviously in the gym floor, I was always there, always speaking to people because pe people at the end of the day buy people. Uh, they're yeah. not coming to you for a training plan. They're coming to you because they connect with you. So all the content that you see me putting on social media, whether it's giving value or whether it's answering a, a objection someone has or telling my story, that's building trust with people that are watching. Because I'd probably say... 80% of the people that join our program now, we may not even talk to for until they've sent that first message, but they've been watching our stories, our reels, our posts. And so they feel like they know that. you. Yeah. That's why you, you try and be as active as possible because just because you don't get thousands of views on something, like you don't need thousands of clients. You need one client and that's all that matters. Hey, you've clearly not seen the clips of this podcast, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to pop off <laughs> um yeah well you know i think that's sick though that you um you clearly make a real effort to to connect with the people that you're training with and i can see that from the stuff you share to your stories like um the, the people who are training with you really appreciate like the stuff you're doing for them i think that's, that's really cool um i think a lot of people maybe don't have a great connection with their especially people who are training them online because you know, there's only a certain amount you can connect with someone through a screen, but uh, you seem to have this sort of very down to earth, personal level um, connection, people c connection with people. And I think it's, it's a lot down to just the way you are with people, the way you talk to people. Um, they feel like they can talk to you about stuff, maybe. I've always been like a personal person. Like I was in hospitality for a good seven or eight years. So like getting to know people and getting people to laugh or, you know, to have a good time was always quite high on my agenda anyway. But I've done a lot of work on like my inner self, like my mental health and also how I speak to people. So when I was back in PT and like it wasn't as good as what it is right now because I didn't understand how to really speak and be around people. Like I, I was naturally quite good at it, but I wasn't able to identify, right, this person needs this or this person maybe needs a little bit more tough love. And it's yeah. being able to know what person needs what button pushing. That's where you build that trust a lot quicker because you can speak to the person instead of like, right, I'm going to coach this process that I know. You refer to PT and in the past tense, would you still consider yourself a personal trainer or would you just say you're an online coach these days? Well, back when I was PT and you didn't get a lot of check-ins throughout the week. You didn't have a coaching aspect. You had coaching as in, in the gym. But if you compare that to online, a beginner trains maybe three days a week, right? So that's only three hours. So there's still 165 hours of the week that they need help with. And it's that coaching that online that that person needs help with, whether it's their nutrition, maybe they've just had like a big emotional reaction to, could be a personal problem or anything. Like a lot of my guys, they, they come in and they're like, oh, I didn't actually think that you were going to be like some sort of life coach. It's like, that's fine, but that's where we build that trust up and then they're able to trust us to, to do that. Because you probably know, speaking to people, how many times has someone had a breakup or an argument or something and they've gone straight for the fridge? 
And their first reaction has been, oh my God, food, I cannot cope with this. You're not going to fix that in a PT session. Yeah, he, that's a, something more, more on a holistic level, something they have to deal with, you know, the mental health side of things as well. I was wondering then, what do you do to differentiate yourself from the abundance of other online coaches and personal trainers? What do you do to set yourself apart from the rest? Would you say it's this personal touch or is there more that you have to do to separate yourself? I think there's a few things. So I also help like in a friend's business, mentor other coaches as well. And there's something right. that I see, especially around our area and especially around like kind of small popularity areas is there's not a lot of resilience with coaches in the fact of like, I'm very lucky because I got mentored by like the best online coaches around here. Right. So I was very, very lucky that he's a very close friend, but you need resilience. And if you don't have resilience, you're never going to make it as an online coach because PTM like to get leads and to get clients, I think it's really easy. You have to be personal in the gym. You have to be good to talk to and you just have to be there because I'd stand at reception and someone would go, Oh, I'm looking for a coach. Great. Hi. Nice to see you. But the complete flip side of online is that you can't stand in reception. You can't be in the gym right. seeing someone struggle and go, can I help you? You have to be resilient and just speak to people. And you are going to get people to, that tell you, go away. They're yeah. not going to yeah. like you reach out because it's not in person. And that, that's okay, but you have to be resilient to it. You can't take rejection personally. That's something I think we can all apply to our lives. <laughs> but you'd be surprised. Like, rejection is hard for people, especially if they're not getting clients through the door because they take it as like a personal attack. So to answer your question, I think I'm very resilient and I can, I can take rejection very well now. I didn't used to. I've got a tough question for you. I've seen this little marketing trick that personal trainers use, yourself included. It says results or money back guarantee. Now, how hmm. much money do they get back? What would you consider a result? And what happens if you would deem a client's lack of progress as not your fault? Have you ever had to give money back? And if not, why not? So... We obviously have a legal commitment. So we have a contract in place. Say you come on board now and you and I agree that we want to achieve X, Y, and Z. Okay. There's obviously, there's always going to be caveats to it. Person to person, result to result. Right. Now that person, they sign their side. I sign mine because you know, and I know if you do the simple things such as track your food correctly, you're open, you're honest, you work hard, you complete your training, you communicate well, such as, you know, completing your weekly check-ins or reaching out if there's something wrong. Then you know, and I know, I guarantee you, you'll get incredible results because that's you being consistent. Would that be fair? Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So if they do that, I guarantee you, you will achieve incredible results. There's, there's no two ways about that. If you don't do them things, if you are haphazard with how you track your food or you don't go do your training or you're not open and honest, you're not going to get incredible results. So the flip side of that money back guarantee is I back my coaching. Like I will get you incredible results. You if you do, yeah. If you do what we say, if you're open and honest with us, guarantee you. So that's how that works. And no, I've never had to refund anyone back, which I, I would if they did exactly what we said and they didn't achieve incredible results. You can have your money back. Great. But I, I know uh, for a fact that like, I back our coaching. Yeah, good answer. Good answer, man. Um, a frustration I hear from a lot of personal trainers is, is when they have spent a lot of time um, building a program or tailoring a program for a client and their their client just isn't, isn't uh, perhaps they're too lazy or they're not motivated to to hit their goals for whatever reason. And they're almost relying on you to, to almost do it for them. But, you know, they've got to take accountability, accountability, sorry, at the end of the day. Um, what do you do or what do you say potentially to clients to, to get them motivated and, and get them through the program? There's a couple of things here. So are you coaching the person or are you coaching the process that you want them to follow? Because not everyone's going to follow the same program. Not everyone is going to like that way. Obviously, you've got a skeleton plan of, right, this is going to get you great results. 
but that person may not want to do X, Y, and Z, right? Now, again, people can talk a good game when they come on board. Like, yeah, I'll do 100% everything that you say. I guarantee it. And you can be open and honest with them and go, right, if there's anything you need changing, anything you need adapting, you have to put that hand up and you have to voice it. Because if I don't know, I can't help. But at the same time, like you can only take a horse to water. You can't make them drink it. So yeah. as long as you as a coach can say, I've reached out to this client. I've offered them to change this. I've wanted to be flexible. I wanted to help them. I wanted to give, go in above and beyond. And something's happened there. There's a disconnect. There's only so much you can do. But if you can go yeah. to bed and not go and write, I've done everything for this client. You have to be okay with that because you're not going to be able to help everyone. Can that be quite frustrating or have you learned to sort of distance yourself from, I know when I've given someone everything that I can offer them and it's up to them at this point, are you able to sort of distance yourself from that and, and uh, not have that frustration? I think I've been able to over the years know that, right, I'm giving this person everything I, I believe, but me being annoyed or a coach watching this or yourself being annoyed that someone's not replying quickly or someone's not completing their training. Like that's because you believe and you value that to be something really important, but just because you believe or value something doesn't mean that that's high on that person's value list either. You need to remember that because if you don't value, if you don't value something, but someone's annoyed that you're not valuing it, like that's fine. You can't take that personally. They've just got different beliefs. Yeah, different strokes for different folks, isn't it? I think one thing that always annoys me, um, I mean, I could, I know you're quite good with this, but uh, when someone says they'll be somewhere at a certain time, and I'll meet, me and you agreed to do this podcast a couple of weeks ago, and obviously there's a bit of doubt in my mind on the day, oh, am I going to get a text in the morning, say, like an hour before, oh, actually, mate, can't do it today, I've got a client booked in for this time, or something like this, but fair play, man of your words, you showed up exactly dead on, dead on the time we agreed. And um, I think that's something that, I find as a, something valuable in a, in a person where they're accountable to the things they say. And um, I think I would find it frustrating. And this is something I'll probably have to, to, to work on if I'm dealing with a lot of clients at any time who perhaps don't have that as a value where they, they don't necessarily go or do what they say they're going to do. And they don't see that as a priority when they, when they've um, agreed to do something. Um, I think I would find that quite frustrating and that's something I'm going to have to, sort of get my head around and, and just be patient with people who don't hold that as importantly as I do, if that makes sense. I think an important thing to remember with that. So are you, you're PT in first, right? That's what you're going to go into. I will. I will be very soon. Yeah. Great. Which Fingers crossed. <laughs> amazing for you because I obviously know you as a person, but I appreciate it, man. to begin with, you need to set clear expectations. There's two types of coaches, coaches that come from, scarcity like i need to do absolutely everything like oh, okay you're going to be 15 minutes late okay i'll move the next three clients 15 minutes late because yeah, i'm not to... going to be one of them i'll tell you that much <laughs> yeah. or there's another coach which i strongly believe that you will be and you, you should be is right this is how it works you need to be 10 minutes early to do your warm-up on your own for example you don't need me to walk you through the treadmill for example right non-negotiable you have to be there because that way I know you're warmed up, you can go straight in and then you're, you're not wasting your time and money, me talking to you on a treadmill. We're getting doing the work properly. And then things like when, for example, online, someone comes on board here, I'm like, right, these are our non-negotiables. This is what you have to do to make this a success. If you don't, then it depends how tough you want to be, but there has to be consequences. Like for example, like the three strikes, if you're not going to do something or you're not going to turn up a coaching call or, you know, if we booked a call like this with a client and yeah. it's just through someone's lazy or someone's just, they've, they've not done it and they do that and they don't turn up three times, they're not coachable. No good. No good. Yeah. But it's being okay with that as well. Cause at the end of the day, yeah. you are a business. As a coach, I would want to see the satisfaction of seeing them reach their goals. And I suppose at some point it's got to be, Right. At some point, we've got to sit down with that person and be like, you know, what what is it that's distracting you from seeing this as a priority and and 
how can we change that? And and perhaps you're not getting enough sleep. Maybe that's why you're sleeping in and missing our call um, or, or missing your personal training session because you're sleeping in and you're not setting yourself a bedtime. Maybe that's something we can do. Maybe that's something we can look at. And maybe, um, like you were saying, having this kind of personal connection with your client and getting to know them, knowing what perhaps their bad habits are, is something we can correct if you're going to be, again, like you say, like more of a lifestyle coach than a, just their trainer. Yeah, exactly that. And that that's something that I've been able to develop. I was actually speaking to a very good friend and a coach yesterday about this similar thing. And we were going through the guys that I've got on board. And apart from the people that have joined within the last six months, I've been with us upwards of six months onwards. Like We've still got people that I was PT in, in wow. DW. But I was going through it and I put it down to being able to have difficult conversations, but also open conversations. So if you've ever, oh, there you go. Sorry, I thought you froze on me. So if you've ever had a client and they've gone, right, I need to stop, right? Unless it's financial, which looking at the time that we live in could well be, but if it isn't, it's through two things, a lack of results where something's just, they've not um, progressed quick enough or a lack of motivation, like something's gone. You tell me now, if you're paying for a service and you're progressing incredibly well, mm. you're not going to stop with that person because you're doing incredibly well. You, sure. if, you're, if it's something else, like you would sacrifice something else because, wow, I'm feeling amazing. I'm getting great results. So the conversation that we have with clients when something big happens, it's like, right, we need to remember, and it's not coming from like a condesc um, condescending way. It's this is what my coaches have always said to me. It's like when emotion is high, intelligence is low. So yeah, <laughs> you're, laughing, you're laughing, but it's really true. Like, and yeah, yeah. If, if they say it's like, oh, this has all happened. I'm going to leave. I'm going to down my tools and I'm going to forget about everything. It's like, great. Now you tell me, is this an emotional decision or is it something that you really want? <sighs> yeah, actually, I've just been having a really stressful time right now okay, great, let's work through that. Because not yeah. looking after your health, your fitness, your sleep, everything else, like it's only going to make that stressful situation even worse. Yeah, I guess it's on you then to have that hard conversation because you know, you know, you can see as an outsider what the best thing for them to do is. It's just a matter of then convincing them, you know, if you're sure in, your, in, in what you're saying, convincing them that that's the right thing to do. And but what do you say asking, then to... Sorry, sorry yeah, go, go on. But asking them permission, like, can't... Um, can, can I be open and honest with you right now? And they're always right. going to say yes, because they trust you and they value your opinion. Instead of just going, I think you're being emotional. <laughs> Doesn't work the same, does it? Yeah, I can imagine that would get probably a more negative response <laughs> than, you're, you know, than you're hoping for. Um, what are some of the, the most common requests you get then um, as an online coach? And what are people, what would you say most people are looking to get out of training with you? What do you mean request? When people come to you, say you're having a uh, a consultation or something with someone for the first time, they say, maybe I want to lose weight for this holiday. I want to put on size, get big and strong. I want to compete in a, I want to do a marathon. What, what, what would you say the most common things that people ask for you to train them for? So you've obviously seen our social media and we take beginners to pros, right? That's, that's I've what seen, yeah, I, yeah. I say on that. I like that catch line. It's good. But there's two types of beginners. So there's a beginner who is petrified of the gym, has barely stood into the gym. They may have been on the treadmill or walked around and just been completely put off by the whole aspect of it, which is a lot of the guys that we do. So that's where the beginner to pro comes from, right? We build you up from there, take you to here, have that lifestyle. Right. And then there's the other side of, you now you've seen these people where I class as beginners, where they've been in the gym for years, but they're a beginner to results. So they've not been progressing. Yes, they've been in the gym. They're like, oh, I know how to use everything. Like, I'm not a beginner. Like, how much progress have you made in the last year? Ah, uh, well, right. So you are. It's a tough pill to swallow, but you are a beginner. So it, as far as like requests go, like we do our due diligence in the DMs where we're speaking to them. We're getting to know where they're at. And this will vary from person to person. But the skeleton that I was talking about before, usually they are 
kind of a weird terminology, but skinny fat. Now, you know what I mean. They haven't got a lot yeah. of muscle, yeah. but they've got a bit of a belly. So the usual protocol for that is like, right, they have to diet first. And then we can go into like a muscle building phase or reverse out of that diet, depending on the person. That's usually. But then if we've got the people who've been training for years, it can be a little bit different. Which kind of client do you prefer then? Do you prefer a client who knows nothing or do you prefer someone who already has a pretty good idea about the gym and you get the sort of exciting part then of taking them to the next level, Greek God type physique? Which do you prefer? <laughs> do you have a preference? They both have their pros. Definitely. Right. So you get more of like a rewarding sense of, right, you've taken someone who's petrified to even walk into the gym and now they're messaging you going, they're on holiday and they've just gone to the um, gym on holiday because they wanted to not because i've asked them to i've given the week off and you're like oh, that's pride that's awesome <laughs> but then you've got a couple of guys and we shared his results a couple of weeks ago and he'd been frustrated for years because he'd been going to the gym but no results and then he gets unreal results and like that's like oh amazing because like visually you see that yeah with the very beginners it's a it's a longer process what would you say then are some of the most important things for beginners or maybe the the ones at that sort of skinny fat stage i, <laughs> I don't know why we keep calling it that but uh the sort of slightly slightly experienced people maybe what are some things that they should consider when it comes to making that kind of noticeable progress that you're talking about there there's no silver bullet people have been going for years they're like i must be missing something like, is it a diet? Do I need to Google something? Is it a special food? Like, is my training split just wrong? Like, no. <laughs> when, it, when it comes to it, they're just not doing things right. So they may be tracking their food, but they have no idea what to, like, what are they aiming for? They're just tracking their food and saying, oh, well, I've had 2,500 calories. Okay, great. Is there any goals in that? Or are you just tracking as you're going? Yeah, well, I'm just seeing how I'm going. Like, I'm not losing weight on this. Right, so it's consistency, but it's also the knowledge of someone else going, right, this is what you need to be able to achieve X, Y, and Z. And also, there's never a goal. So you'll probably find with PT and people come to you and go, oh, I need to diet. Well, yes. But when it comes to online clients, a lot of people struggle and fall off because when they get put on a diet, it's there's no end goal. They just think that they have to diet for the rest of their life because that's what they've known for the last 30 odd years, right? So what they've been missing is clarity, right? We're going to diet for X. At the end of that, we're going to go to X, Y, Z. And then they're like, oh, I only have to work hard in this diet for 12, 16 weeks, whatever it is. I'm like, oh, um, yeah, I'm going to work so much harder. I'm going to be more consistent because they've got an end goal in mind. And that's what a lot of them people in the gym just don't have. Like, oh, I just, I just want to get bigger. Or I just want to get leaner. It's, it's not enough. Yeah. Yeah. It's about um, reassessing your goals as well, isn't it? You know, you can be, you can smash one part. Perhaps you're really good at cutting. But then if you don't then reassess your goals, once you hit that cutting portion you 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 aim for in the first place, to then maybe put on a bit of size, perhaps change your training style up a little bit, perhaps change your calorie intake, set yourself a new goal. You know, people get stuck in a rut and they think, oh, this is work. This has worked for me so far. I'm just going to keep doing this where really you've got to constantly be changing your goals, updating what you're working towards. You know, I'm constantly doing that myself. I'm sure you are as well. Um, do you think people miss that sometimes? Yes, but I also think people see getting to like a certain weight on the scales as I've completed it. Right. You've not you've not completed fitness. Like as soon as they Never realize it. Yeah, as soon as they realize that this is a forever thing. Hmm. This isn't I'm going to get you to a certain weight and up oh, you're fixed, off you go. As soon as you detach yourself from that and you take right, the gym is actually my lifestyle now. Eating well and two goals this is actually really really good for me. Because I'm hoping our generation are going to be the ones that aren't frail or aren't, aren't the ones who are walking around on Zimmer frames and unable to get up. Like if you do that, yeah. your quality of life is going to be incredible. 
everyone who has like a real dedication to training and who's made who's made training a part of their lifestyle um it seems like they've all been through something significant in their life to sort of change their mindset in that way to sort of shock the system and um maybe something that makes them want to see want to find more value in themselves or prove their their self-worth to themselves um is there a mental hurdle that you feel you've overcome or faced at any point in your journey that has sort of catapulted your fitness journey um, and put you on this path or perhaps reinvigorated your passion at some point for training? I was always a skinny guy in school. Like if I stood sideways on a drain, I'd fall down. All right. <laughs> so again, the guy who helped me with my business and who I work with, he was my first fitness coach. So he helped me with that to just gain my confidence because my confidence was in the gutter at the time. So going to the gym, seeing that progress, get, falling in love with, oh, he's done that for me. I'd love to do that for someone else. So when it comes to my own fitness, like what catapulted me is all these guys who look at me now, all these beginners and all these guys that I coach, not in a cringy way, but like I'm, they, they look up to me. Because yeah, yeah, I yeah. used to be in that space and they're like, oh, I would love to be like that. So if I don't feel like training or if I don't feel like doing my steps or tracking my food or being on it, I'm letting myself down, right? But I'm letting, you know, 40, 50 other guys down and whoever else is watching on, on my stories. That's a pretty good reason to get me to be consistent. So if you go out for a mad bender on the weekend or something, or you miss your steps for a week, do you just, do you just hide it? <laughs> I don't drink. I don't drink no, anymore. Fair enough. Oh, that's a safe. That's a safe way to <laughs> handle that, I suppose. Um, Andy, we've not got much time left, so I've just got one thing to to finish on. Um, how important do you think it is to have the right mindset and the right energy when when on the way to the gym, approaching a gym session each time you're at the gym, making the most of that time, just coming in with the right with the right mindset, with the right vibe. It's so high on your priority list, isn't it? The gym, you want it to be perfect. You want to have the right music. You want to have everything perfect. But if you're talking to a PT client who may have two kids, a nine, nine till six job, eight till six job, you just have to show up. Like you will not always be in the right mindset. And like as a coach, you just have to be aware of that because you're, you're not going to be able to instill that all the time. You're going to have to be instilling right, I need you to turn up because you turning up and going to the gym and having this habit is what's going to get you results, whether you feel motivated or not. Is that what your advice would be to someone then? Because, you know, like we were saying earlier about taking your own accountability for stuff, if you're on the way to the gym to get yourself in that mindset of just get through it and then you'll, you know, if you keep getting through it, you'll start to build that motivation to keep sticking at it. Do, do you think that's a, something people should take accountability for definitely but you show me a client or someone in the gym who's progressing well they may not be in the mood to go to the gym or be bothered but you tell me if they're following a training plan that's for them and they know they're progressing are they finishing that gym session better or worse than what they went in 99.9 percent .9 of the time they're going to feel better yeah, fair enough, man. Um, well, that's all we've got time for. Man. We've got to leave it there. Um, I think this has been a really informative episode. I, th I think especially for people like myself who are thinking about going into into the realm of um, personal training, perhaps online coaching someday. Uh, <laughs> we'll see how that goes. But uh, yeah, I hope people like got a lot out of this. And I certainly did just listen to, to some of what you were saying there. And um, yeah, it's been a great episode. Appreciate your time, man. Thanks for coming on. Oh, man, pleasure. Thank you for having me as well. Thank <laughs> you.